speaker is uh, John Quirk. He's a civil engineer, a lot of years of experience in managing major, mega, and super problems. He's currently working as the executive project director for the Ma'adin al Quwa aluminum complex project in Saudi Arabia. He will tell us about the proper problems Good morning, everybody. I'm certainly honoured to be here and uh, on this prestigious event. As uh, spoken, the scientific committee has asked me to specifically talk about um, uh, governance and directorship of uh, context projects, very large projects, which are pretty normal in the Gulf and the Middle East in general. Uh, I'm a working professional. Circuit guy, um, so I'll just share my experiences and how I go about structuring these types of projects. Uh, prior to the project that I'm on, I spent about the last 15 years travelling the world, basically rescuing projects uh, that have run into trouble or hit a brick wall, typically at the end of the basic engineering phase. And you'll see some of those lessons learned as far as I've seen them anyway included in the um, presentation. <coughs> say what I'm about to show is the only way of going about it, it's just the formula that I work, uh, that I use and apply and generally build on and that's the beauty of projects, they're all unique, they're all different, we learn off one another so it's a very much an applied um, uh, presentation so take it from what you will. Um, it's only a 30 minute duration so if you've got any questions perhaps if you could um, you know, ask those after, just grab me uh, around any time. Um, so, the um, <coughs> limited time, so <coughs> I'll be talking about the context of um, uh, mega projects, super projects and galaxy level projects, uh, about the stakeholders are incredibly diverse um, and also investors are involved, there's large sums of money so confidence is key and bankability standards. Um, they're so massive, while they're in a host country, they're generally uh, launched on a global platform that I refer to as a three-dimensional or 3D environment versus smaller projects that are more of a 2D management environment. <clears throat> you know, essentially projects, and that's the beauty of them as well, are very much people-driven, and um, you're talking a very diverse purpose-built teams for these types of projects, so we'll discuss those a little bit as well. Um, <clears throat> So as a, I'm a working professional, as I said, uh, brought here by the uh, scientific committee to give my insights into real world practice governance and directorship on the uh, major international projects in the context level. You know, governance, I guess, is a, is a structured approach in my view, and it needs to be structured. It's not, it can't be loose. It needs to be very structured. <clears throat> and providing confidence and assurance to the stakeholders that their investments and, and otherwise uh, ambitions and objectives are, are being adhered to. <clears throat> Directorship, as I sort of see it, is, is taking those visions, values and aspirations uh, and the physical criteria of, the, of these stakeholders and bringing them into a conformed reality. But, you know, these projects are so large that it's done on a massive um, global scale, as we'll look at some of the context projects, examples that I've brought along. And confidence is paramount, as I said, uh, every step of the way, all the stakeholders need confidence. Um, there's a lot at stake there, so... Um, you know, there's no hard and fast rules with these things. I tend to like to categorise projects. Other people may categorise them a little bit differently just purely to frame the organisational, the governance structures, the directorship uh, structures, the uh, purpose-built teams into mega-projects. I generally see those, and complexity can play a, a part in this, but uh, mega-projects, usually single-digit billions. Super-projects I see in the uh, double-digit billion, US billions, and then galaxy-projects. Um, 
is a term that I use and, and invented, uh, are generally into triple digit billions and can run right through to a trillion dollars or something. <clears throat> um, they're certainly um, immense undertakings and uh, as such, you know, the a structured approach to governance and directorship is essential. The other, for the stakeholder confidence, all these projects that I do from the outset, I make sure that they're to a uh, bankable standard. <clears throat> we'll talk about the, the facets of, the, of a certified bankable uh, platform in a while. But of course, they're made up of people, and so team cohesion is paramount, and they're launched on a global platform. So we're talking about a lot of different cultures, uh, a lot of different people, um, <clears throat> and so forth. So um, uh, a couple of context projects. So this is the uh, previous project that I was on in uh, Brazil. It's a historical project. It's the largest uh, brownfield alumina refinery expansion project ever undertaken and it included a large processing facilities on the, on the back of an existing facility as well as a new bauxite mine some thousand kilometres away up in the Amazon. Um, we completed within baseline parameters um, and the project hub was established in Sao Paulo. <clears throat> um, some people like to set up their hub or their head office, if you will, uh, I, I guess to match the, um, the phases of the project and that's fine if it works for me. For me, I generally go straight into the uh, host country and set up a command centre or a hub and drive the project from the, the inside out, if you will, and, and manage the world from there because uh, important with government relations and, and driving it from its end result point. So I generally that's my formula is to start from the inside out and within the host country. Uh, super project in context, this is the one I'm currently on with my colleague Saad and my son's visiting here to get into the project business and that's in Saudi Arabia. Again, it's a historical project. It's uh, in its own right. It uh, includes a bauxite mine, refinery, smelting, rolling mill and all the supporting infrastructure around it. <clears throat> and um, it's historic in that nobody's ever tried to do uh, bauxite to can or automotive products, the whole process, on the one plot at the same time. So of course it represented a, an immense risk to undertake so much in the, in, in, in the one shot. Generally they're over many years in different locations. We established the command centre for this in uh, Al Kabar from the day one and basically driven the, driven the world from the inside out in Saudi Arabia and then shifted it up to the construction site. The sort of context, uh, the galaxy projects I talk about, <clears throat> they're around the world, uh, perhaps not referred to as such or perhaps not linked as such and that's an observation that I've made. I've just you know, called up off the uh, different publications, some of the sort of major developments going on in the world, Typic typically government, not to say private industry doesn't do uh, galaxy type projects, but also in conjunctions typically with government support and so forth. But they're certainly immense and diversified and sometimes cross-border, multi-country involved like the China-Russia LNG projects that's coming up. UAE has a massive development <clears throat> with its expo coming up, all of the other, um, all of the other developments, the same as in the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. There's a massive development there and, um, in, in Riyadh alone, let alone the rest of the country that's being launched. But an observation is that the, the countries or the entities <clears throat> are perhaps not recognising these uh, galaxy projects for what they really are, are linked. They may have a strategic... Um, committee or such like, <clears throat> involving a lot of different government people, but um, you know what I'd promote is it get formed into a more structured galaxy centre to, to manage the entire development, and it could be 15, 20 year development program. <clears throat> Typical stakeholders uh, on these sorts of projects that uh, are involved in the government's process and, and certainly th uh, through the directorship, you know, certainly um, very diverse, um, multiple joint ventures, multiple governments uh, involved, multiple host cunts, ministries and agencies, and really governance uh, and directorship quite simply serves the interests and the objectives of the stakeholders. Uh, yeah, sorry. Serves the interests and uh, 
of the uh, stakeholders. <clears throat> and they're very expansive and diverse, all have their own interests and those, those interests need to be implemented and managed and reporting and so forth. Um, this is a little model that I tend to use just to make sure that I've got all the bases covered as we, we go into these types of projects. Um, <clears throat> but it's got to be holistic and, and all-encompassing um, within a 3D environment. So while we have a hub or a, 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 a galaxy centre, there could be up to 30 different offices around the world, all in their own right, building different facets of these projects. So it's certainly got to be capable in what I call a three-dimensional environment. Um, and off to the right of the, uh, the uh, model there, um, and as Covey writes, the, uh, the begin with the end of the mic, because th these are the end users. There's all sorts of requirements they have, whether it be technical or even legacy. So the project needs to be a legacy machine for the ongoing operation. So, you know, I tend to try and put all of this model in sync on, on and each one of those didn't. held me in reasonable stead. So, um, so structuring these types of projects, and again, this is just how I do it. Uh, other people here are practicing professionals and may do it other ways or variations of this. Um, but simplistically, um, on, um, on a mega project to just simply use, um, we have governance JV committees and, and steering committees and the usual, uh, set up a, um, a sorry, project hub just a, a simple hub in the host country, and then project managers over each of the areas of the uh, mega project. So divisionalise it. And certainly we've got third party infrastructure on all of these types of projects. And matrix controls. Um, and, you know, standardisation is so essential on these projects. There's so much going on, so much information being generated around the world. Um, you need a degree of standardisation to do roll-up reporting. As the project size gets bigger, of course, that gets even more critical because the level of communications and information is exponential. Uh, Nick, uh, um, super project, um, a little bit differently, um, but basically it's just building on the uh, first theme and so much that we've set up a command centre uh, working through typically a, a governance board, a board of directors, could be owners of the companies at hand that, uh, uh, with lenders and so forth, uh, and a number of mega projects under the one super project umbrella, which is the project that I'm on at the moment. So this is the organisational structure we've successfully applied there. Project directors over each, and then uh, purpose-built project teams for each of the mega projects under the super project umbrella. Uh, and of course, you know, you've got PMCs involved, so we'd have a PMC company with us. Each of these might have um, a combination of uh, EPCMs and or lump sum turnkey contractors on various parts of these individual mega projects. And then again, we use a hub control rather than just simple matrix because each of these mega projects has, like uh, for an example, their own project controls division. So we use a hub controls division to roll up the report, do the standardisation, and then publish reports um, to the um, stakeholders and lenders and, and whoever else um, <coughs> requires same. Um, Galaxy projects, again, just building. Of course, these start to get very, I guess, for lack of a better term, <laughs> fragmented because there's so <coughs> diversity in different countries and different interest group, different government departments, but it's all heading for a, a countrywide or a statewide holder uh, investment plan. Um, so again, um, a little bit like this, could have a number of super projects under the Galaxy um, umbrella, uh, some mega projects hanging off it. Um, so generally, uh, we recommend a Galaxy Centre be involved. There could be uh, representatives of all of the different uh, government departments involved with inside that Galaxy, working through a, an executive project director. And of course, um, each one of these, a super project, would generally apply the organisation that I showed you for the super project and for the mega projects, the structure that I said for the um, mega projects. <coughs> um, and, um, you know, very, very intense. And again, we need a hub control within each of these um, and also a, an overall Galaxy hub for the 
rolling up of data and so forth, and standardised reporting and progress measurements and these types of facets. Um, Confidence is key. Obviously, the you know the, uh, the the amount of money on on the line or on the balance sheet of the stakeholders is enormous on these type size projects. So it's essential, in my view, from the outset that you know everything must be tested and and, and uh, uh, confirmed as being fit for purpose or meeting bankable standards. And that's the foundation of moving forward for governance and directorship and continue to validate the fit-for-purpose nature and the, the bankable uh, status of all of the information and the estimates and the time to go and these types of things. And um, so, you know, we use um, a number of third-party professionals to do the bankable certification, generally on annual staged events and produce those types of reports. Annual And uh, the people themselves, so the professional individuals... Um, themselves need to be fit for purpose for the project at hand and scrutinised because it's a professional environment. Um, so communications and reporting, it's, a, it's a, these types of projects, it's machine-like, it's just a 24-7 machine reporting and communicating from around the globe and in, out, in my case, out from the host country. So. Um, you know, obviously uh, systems and so forth is critical, but the sheer breadth, complexity and diverse of it, um, <clears throat> you know, have to have everybody on a standardised um, platform, whether it be a standardised procedure for project measurement, standard pro formas for KPI data, so all of the centres in the world are coming up at a certain level, not necessarily level three, because, you know, you'll have people with EPCM guys like Bechtel or Afflua with proprietary products. So we generally take it up at a level two. Um, or on a galaxy, it might be level one and a half and start rolling up at that level. And then the, each of the projects deals with its level three, level four, level five type uh, level data, but roll it up on a standardised. So it's a big undertaking to get that level of standardisation uh, uh, launched on a project like this. And you, know, and you can't possibly know everything that's going on on the project. You're really sitting in this uh, galaxy centre or a command centre. You just need to know the, uh, the key KPIs that's happening, uh, focusing on leading uh, indicators rather than lagging indicators. So when I see the weekly KPIs coming out um, and so forth. <clears throat> Um, just a quick tour of control techniques, um, candidly, and, and I've found through rescuing these projects, you know, if the jigsaw puzzle, as I say, becomes broken or uncertainty, it's a lengthy and uncertain thing to get it back on track again. And of course, um, you're ever mindful about the diminishing opportunities curve on projects like this, the times remaining static but your ability to affect the outcome or influence the outcome is, is degrading severely as you come along. So certainly by definitive estimate stage, you, you've really only got about a 30% chance of inf influencing that outcome. So you've got to stay on top of it through the KPIs, the leading and the lagging, and the bankable process to make sure that this thing stays together because it starts to get broken, as I've found over the last 15 years. It's a very difficult thing to put it back together on the run, preserve the uh, investment and get it to the finish line. Um, so again, stand it up, roll, we do it weekly on the leadings, rolled up KPI reports, all the major KPIs, uh, trending and diagnostics. Where's the crystal ball? Where's this thing headed? Because it's like a juggernaut at, at that level of project. You're managing a juggernaut each day, basically. And, and instead of sort of, um, you know, reporting scheduling, we use tow guide and reverse scheduling techniques to, to move that along. Risk management is key as well, understanding those risks. And I won't go into the, you know, the cost estimates at P50 versus risk management that I see at P85. Uh, having the time today. Um, um, leadership, so it's a people-driven thing. So very much focus on, um, on leadership and team cohesion. And, and, and governance leaders in this context to me are, are professional leaders uh, and they're made and not born. So not, not charismatic generally type leaders, or I guess some of us may be a little bit charismatic, I don't know. They're generally made through professional studies, training, moulding, mentoring, 
and so forth. And accordingly, you know, all the directors and key staff need to be fit for purpose on, on such projects before they're engaged. And key cohesion, there's just so many um, different uh, people involved, very culturally diverse. Um, it needs to be, the whole team needs to be mapped in its cultures and its professionalism and its diversity and then moulded and be fit for purpose before launching the team on, on the challenge at hand. Um, this is a, a subject that I'm uh, very passionate about. Um, I like to speak to you and of course um, uh, chaps like myself, we've maybe got one or two more of these projects in us, but the um, big thing is to leverage leadership, the leadership of tomorrow, the directors, the people that do the governance of tomorrow. And you know, these projects offer just the unique um, experience and dynamics to really uh, catapult and train the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, and then develop further best industry package. On the current project, I've on average assigned eight staff that have been given to me by the joint venture that I've been mentoring from managers to some of them are now project directors in their own right because the duration was five years. Um, and this is every, every um, senior director or manager on the projects, I make sure that they've at least got three to five young talents assigned with them from the outset, tailor their trailing, training programs, on the job, mentoring, nurture them to take them into succession mode for the next generation of leaders. Um, we, we target them through giving them access to tertiary education programs, do a master's degree applied science project management or postgraduate work, certainly institutional and association programs, PMI certification, actively on the project that I have. We've got a, a whole raft of up and coming young project professionals in this mode on this particular project. Because it's a sort of, for a lot of people, it's a once in a lifetime experience, these sorts of projects. They don't, they don't come around so much. Our future initiatives I'd like to see, uh, certainly like uh, PMI, AI, PM, uh, which is what I'm with, is uh, on, the, on the project PMO, so run a PMO office on one of these galaxy or super projects and, and, and give a access to the experience of, of these projects to a wider audience. Same thing with the university collaborations. Uh, I'm with the QUT and, and, and uh, Australia, but look at putting an on the, uh, on the project student campus group, bringing in students on summertime holidays and or extended uh, work periods while they're doing assignments and this sort of thing. So basically developing the leaders of tomorrow. Um, I'm very passionate about it and I, I, like some of my colleagues, go about it on these projects in a, in a very structured and calculated manner on these training programs. And um, that's about all I have, so if there's uh, no questions um, or if anybody wants to grab me uh, uh, after this, then uh, I'll answer any questions anybody has. Thank you very much. <laughs>